We're going to look at an example problem for finding the edge of pavement elevation. We're asked to determine the outside edge of pavement elevation at station 41 and the inside edge of pavement elevation at station 51 plus 50. So two different edge of pavement uh, elevation locations, station 41 and 51 plus 50. We're told the curve has a design super elevation of 6.6% and has a constant longitudinal grade of negative 1.83% throughout this section of road. It's a two lane section with 12 foot wide lanes and the center line of the highway has an elevation of 1,984.61 feet at station 38. So we're shown a little diagram of our curve and by looking at this curve we should note that this is a spiraled curve. There is our TS point at station 39 plus 42.09, then we move along our spiral portion, then our circular curve portion, then finally another spiral transition until we end this spiral curve at our spiral to tangent point ST at station 51 plus 92.09. We're also given information about our point of intersection, station 45 plus 89.22 and it has an intersecting angle of 40 degrees. So for this, I'd like to start with finding the elevation at each point at the center line of the roadway. So we're kind of pulling apart the components for this problem, starting on the vertical side, and then the horizontal and the cross section are so closely linked, we'll do those together, but starting on the vertical component. So at station 41, our center line elevation we're 300 feet from the point that we were given as our reference point for the elevation. So 300 times our slope, that's negative 0.183. And we're going to add that, add that to the elevation of our known point at station 38, 1984.61. So the center line of the roadway at station 41 is 1,979.12 feet. Similarly, at station 51 plus 50, we're now 1,350 feet from our reference location. So we're going to multiply that again by that constant slope, 1.83%. Add it to that elevation that we were given, and we're going to find an elevation at the center line at station 51 plus 50 of 1,959.91 feet. And again, these are the center line elevations, so we need to now figure out what is that edge of pavement elevation. So here's our, our drawing. We're looking for station 41 and for station 51 plus 50. Each of these are on the curve. They're within the bounds of the spiral curve. They do happen at different places. So at station uh, 41, we're on that first spiral transition. At station 51 plus 50, we're on that second spiral transition, but we need to figure out exactly where we are on these at these points, since that's what this process is going to take us through as we solve this. We can also, one of the, the key distances we'll need, at least for the first part, is how far that station 41 is from our tangent to spiral point that's given, and that's 157.91 feet, and that's just subtracting the TS point from our point of interest, station 41. So starting with that station 41 point, we're looking for the outside edge of pavement. The outside lane cross slope is gonna be our design super elevation, 6.6% multiplied by that transition area, the proportion of that transition area that we move through. So the 157.91 feet divided by that spiral transition of 250 feet gives us a cross slope at the, the instant you're at station 41 of 4.1688%. So our outside edge of pavement elevation is simply we're going to start at our center line and we're going to add our cross slope and the lane width to that. So 1,979.12 feet plus that outside, ed, outside lane cross slope, 4.1688% times that lane width of 12 feet. This is a two lane road, so only one lane width to get from the center line to that outside edge of pavement. So we're gonna find the outside edge of pavement elevation of 1,979.62 feet. 
Now moving to the inside edge of pavement at station 51 plus 50. The important thing here that we're going to look for, and, and I'll actually show this information on another diagram, another way to look at this uh, on the following slide after we kind of solve this, this math. We need to see, are we in that tangent runout area or not? So we're going to multiply our spiral transition length, 250 feet, by our normal crown, 2%. And that's just a standard given divided by our design super elevation. That's our equation for the tangent run out. In this case, it's 75.75 feet. And that means that the tangent run out starts at station 51 plus 16.33. So our point of interest is actually within that tangent run out area between the where the tangent run out starts and through our spiral to tangent point. And this is very important. This means we're just at normal crown there. So our in, inside edge of pavement's at normal crown when we're within that tangent run out. So the inside edge of pavement elevation, we're going to start with our center line. Elevation 1,959.91 feet. And we're going to subtract off because that inside edge of pavement falls away from the center line. So we're going to subtract 2% times our 12 feet lane width. It's going to give us an inside edge of pavement elevation of 1,000. 959.67 feet. So let's let's take a look at our, our diagram looking at, we're looking at the profile view and we also at the bottom have the cross section view. So we're having, having multiple perspectives here. Our points that we're given are TS point 39 plus 42.09. So we're just taking the information that we saw for that we're given and placing it on this diagram. So hopefully this gives us a better perspective of the values that we had and the values that we solved for. Next, we have our spiral to curve point SC is at station 41 plus 92.09. Then that takes us to our CS point 49 plus 42.09. And finally, our ST point, station 51 plus 92.09. So these are our, our given points, and this is kind of showing us how this relates to how that cross slope and cross-section changes throughout this spiral curve. We're told that the super elevation runoff is 250 feet, and that occurs on both sides of the curve, and our design super elevation is 6.6%. So both on the inside edge and outside edge, that's our design super elevation, and it's gonna transition up to and then out of that 6.6%. Our center line we're showing in this diagram as being flat, but actually it has a negative 1.83% longitudinal slope. And our points of interest, these are what we solved for at station 41, was 1,979.62 feet. That's our outside edge of pavement elevation. We started with that center line elevation and then moved outward to that outside edge of pavement elevation. We were also asked for station 51 plus 50 the inside edge of pavement elevation. And because we're looking at the inside edge of pavement elevation, it was important for us to solve for that tangent runout. And once you're within that tangent runout, we know that, that inside edge of pavement is just 2%. That, that inside lane cross slope is at 2% at the normal crown. So it actually simplifies the process of coming up with what that uh, cross slope is and following the, out, the inside edge of pavement elevation. We can see that at that same location, if we were asked for the outside edge of pavement elevation, it is not 2%. We would actually need to solve that in a similar way we did with the other station. And just to maybe fully orient this, if we actually rotated this diagram at the center line slope of negative 1.83%, we're going to see everything rotates that way. The relative elevation to our inside and outside edge of pavement elevation still stays the same, but that center line slope changes and therefore the center line elevation changes and we still need to move relative from it to our inside or outside edge of pavement.